Hi, this is Charlie Matutuyella with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, bluebearflutes.com is our website, as well as Blue Bear Flutes on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and a bunch of other things. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you guys today, at the end of this video, if you decide to, you may want to join our Blue Bear Flutes uh, Facebook group. And the reason I say that is because we'd love to see if you make what our project is today, which is probably absolutely nuts that we made a video for this, but, but if you make this flute or a similar one, we'd love to see pictures of it. And I hope that any of you um, would share them with us on our Facebook group on Blue Bear Flutes. Anyway, and what we're doing today actually followed along behind this. This is a Red Cedar uh, low bass A flute, a really low tone flute. <laughs> takes not just effort and lungs and being able to stretch your fingers in order to play this thing. Originally, Native Americans didn't make really low tone flutes. Now, I'm going to refer back to a couple of pages in my book today. I'm going to put on my trusty old man glasses. Okay. Anyway, um, one thing I'm going to tell you about is that uh, page 68, we start talking about making deep tone Native American flutes. Now, of course, too, deep tone flutes uh, were not something that was originally made. And here's a quote from my book. Yes, I make deep tone flutes, and yes, there are schematics in the back of this book to show how to make some types of low tone flutes. However, there were not any original Native American flutes that were deep tone historically, and uh, at least not any that we have found examples of. So really low tone flutes are not something that Native people made. It's something that was made popular uh, the concept of Native American flutes being a low tone instrument was made popular, popular, <laughs> I started talking like some people I don't know, but anyway, as uh, it was made popular back in the uh, old 40s and 50s uh, black and white cowboy and Indian movies. Uh, a lot of those had a, a low tone flute, it was actually in the key of low C, which was a couple of notes above this guy. Um, the low C flute that they were playing was not a Native American flute, it was a silver transverse flute. And uh, it was a great sounding instrument, they played some really cool sounding stuff on it, but it was not a Native American flute. Some interesting stories behind how that happened, not ones I'm going to share today. Anyway, what we did in the shop today, which I'm telling you about that is absolutely just crazy crazy, is we made this big boy here. And big boy is something that just naturally, <laughs> looking at it, you think there's no way that's real. but this is a really big flute. Uh, it's made out of a piece of 2 inch Schedule 40 PVC, something that you can find just about anywhere. It has five fingering holes drilled in it and five fingering holes. So many of you are thinking, well, why didn't you make a six hole flute? <clears throat> back to the book let's see here so number one first foremost and most importantly if I can make a five hole flute that'll play as many notes sometimes more notes than a six hole flute why would I want to make a six hole flute that you have to add extra fingers to hold those you know holes in place so you know I've found that in flute making a lot of times more fingerings or you know whenever there's more of anything those are possible spots for air to leak out. And the more possible spots you have for air to leak out, the more difficult it is to play. Having said that, of course, if it's something you can play conveniently with five fingerings that you may be accustomed to playing on six, but you can play it with five, then why not make it in five? And of course, too, you can make a lot of our flutes in four finger holes as well. A lot of the original sizes uh, you can make in a uh, four hole flute and they'll still play all the same notes in some cases once again maybe even just a couple more sounds crazy but look into it we've got videos on that so what is more traditional a five or a six hole flute and it has been in recent times that i could come up with an analogy that would be a good response to that question i get asked all the time i still do uh, my answer is which is more traditional leather or grass slash bark clothing this is on page four by the way of the book, The Art of Native American Flute Making, by Charlie and Jesse Montefiore. Well, let's see here. So some people can answer my question by saying it depends on what tribe, but even that isn't always actually a good answer. 
to the question, Hollywood has convinced people that indigenous peoples living on the plains have always worn buckskin, have always been nomadic, and the truth is that we all did these kind of things. And there were groups of nomadic Cherokee, likewise. There were uh, Sioux Indians who lived in one place, uh, you know, and weren't nomadic. There were all kinds of people that wore everything from leather to woven, grass, bark, clothing. Uh, you know, it's not because of advancement or convenience, and many times there's no way uh, to give that much sought after absolute answer. And remember what Yoda said absolutes are the way to deduction. That's the only time I'm ever going to do my Yoda impersonation for you guys. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of really good things in this book, apparently. Wow, a lot of thought into this. Anyway, so having said that, um, you know, there were Native people who made five-hole flutes and four-hole flutes and six-hole flutes. And some of the people that made five-hole flutes also made four-hole flutes. And some of the people made six, made five, and four, and so on and so on. Truth is, most of us made some of everything, best I can tell. Um, the four-hole flute, like I say in the past, I've mentioned in some videos, is one of the ones that has dated back the furthest historically. Most of them originally were rim-blown flutes. However, uh, from Mexico to New York, I think they've been made with a little plug piece inside of them, um, and probably further than that. You know, I know we've seen some uh, in recent videos with Mongolians that have been playing those types of flutes. So there's a lot of really interesting ideas out there, and they're all worth exploring and checking out. Just like making this mega low bass flute. And do we have instructions in my flute making book on how to make this mega low bass flute? Let's see here, page six, no we don't. Actually this uh, low bass flute, this, uh, what is it people are calling them? Their contrabass flute. Contrabass, now there's a word. And I know there was a reason I didn't take my glasses off yet. Uh, the contrabass flute idea is just, I mean, in Native American terms, I think the best word in the few languages that I can remember off the top of my head, it comes up to be silly. Uh, contrabass. And we're on page 82 of alternate methods of flute making in my book. And uh, I mentioned the fipple type. And <laughs> I think I may have said fipple in one other video, and I promise you that was going to be the only time I ever say that, but I'm going to say it this one time. Take a good look. This is the only time that I say this word in this entire book. Uh, well, other than maybe in the glossary. One of my good friends back in high school who was just getting into computers heavily before he finally went to work for IBM, uh, and at this point, after this book was written and this point today, it's been some years, he's actually went on, he's no longer with IBM, uh, told me about a mystical grab bag of computer terms that some computer repair people use to make themselves look smart. It's like, you know, is your RAM this speed or this speed? Does it have, you know, this much front side bus or is it that? Or, you know, there's just so much. And today there's words like, SSD, you know, and uh, what type of HDD do you have? Is it a, a optical drive? I mean, just come on. Anyway, so there's a lot of these magical mystery words that people use, like the word fipple. The word fipple is a Norwegian word, and it means the horse's lip. And for that reason, in making a musical instrument, a wind instrument, it can be used to describe that as the horse's lip. It's the piece that's right there. And... You know, there's so many of these words. You don't have to learn these words or master their use or anything really to be able to make a Native American flute. Um, and let's see, back to my book here. These computer terms, like my friend was mentioning, are used to make themselves look smart. I'm sorry, but back in the beginning days of flute making, when there were lots of people thinking about making flutes, and many of them with little success, many of the fancy terms and groups were formed, which eventually gave birth to flute aristocracies. And that's why I'm telling you this. This contrabass flute was uh, something that for the longest time, many people could not afford. Because if you were to ask me to make one of these out of wood today, and if I had time to, I'm not saying I do, and please don't ask, uh, I would probably have to charge you seven or eight hundred bucks to make one of these. That's me. I'm like one of the least expensive Native American flute makers out there that makes his own flutes. But, um, you know, 
when you ask people who are professional flute makers that this is pretty much all they do is make this one type of flute, um, they may get twelve, fourteen to two, three thousand dollars for a contrabass flute. And uh, likewise, contrabass is just the silliest thing to me because once again, Native Americans didn't originally make flutes this size that made this sound, and it just didn't happen. And they certainly didn't originally make them out of PVC. Uh, once again, this Native American made this one out of PVC, and it is playable, and it's actually pretty cool. It's something fun to play, and you know, it didn't cost me 700 bucks to make this flute. It didn't even cost me 100 bucks to make this flute, and even in my time, which my time is incredibly valued, and that's why I like spending some of it you know, making videos for you guys on how to make Native American flutes, especially how you can make them yourselves, or how you can make them for less. Um, this flute here cost me less than 20 bucks to make, including my time, you know, and uh, it's really, really kind of neat. Like I say, it's something else. It has three fingerings in the front, which I can play with, you know, whichever fingers feel comfortable. And then in the back, it's got two thumb holes, which are just there because that's the most convenient place to reach. And, um, you know, a few pieces of plumbing here and there, and that's really about it. And like I say, you can, you can have it produce such wonderful sounds and... It took us all of, what, about 15, 20 minutes, I think, to make. And that's with me taking my time and trying to show you this and show you that. Um, this flute was real easy to make. So I hope that you guys enjoy the video. And certainly don't feel like you have to be one of those flute aristocracies and, you know, making contrabass flutes. Uh, or using those fancy words like fipple that don't really mean anything in English. I mean, they do now. But uh, don't think that you have to fall into any category or criteria. You don't even have to make it out of PVC. I mean, I would have made this thing out of cardboard in a second. Uh, and it performed just as well. We have other cardboard flute videos. So if you haven't seen those, check them out. There's some really good ones. Um, but really, you know, something kind of cool, something to tinker around with. I always wanted to make one of, never really wanted to own one, but <laughs> here we are and made it out of PVC because that's something that a lot of you have on hand when you uh, when you're looking for something to make flutes out of you don't have to hollow it out so that's the easy part and uh, like I said a really really neat job so I hope that you guys enjoy the video check it out leave me some positive comments I would love that and as I say probably at the end of this video please subscribe and hit that bell icon and whatever so that you get my next silliest craziest we have come a long ways folks uh, and we appreciate you watching otherwise I wouldn't be making these videos so check it out and then uh, see what you think. You know, it's a great, great uh, concept, I guess I could call it, instrument. So see, see where we go from here and I'll just uh, shut up and play, Charlie. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you want to do is cut the length of PVC to, uh, I'll give you this in inches, excuse me, to about uh, 32 and a half inches long. Of course, as you can probably tell, this is a piece of two inch, it says somewhere here, this down here, two inch schedule 40 PVC. And we'll get to those measurements you've seen on the back in just a second. So it needs to be about 32 and a half inches long. Okay, and then to begin, we're gonna put the rest of these measurements in metric. So those of you who are counting your millimeters right now, that was actually uh, 825 millimeters. I'm gonna go that way. Anyway, the first measurement we're concerned with up here is where these um, the sound hole is gonna go. And I know my numbers are kind of worn off of this ruler, but it's 35 millimeters is the beginning here, and then it's going to go down to 45. So it's 35 to 45 is the length of that little sound hole that we're going to make. And then of course you have the track. I've just kind of drawn it out so that I can kind of keep up with it there. It's going to be the width of the sound hole, which I'll tell you in just a moment, and it's going to be the length from 
uh, the end of the sound hole here or the beginning of it, whichever you're looking at, all the way to the back. So let's see what the measurement of this guy is wide. We're looking at 15 millimeters wide, give or take, you know, on the inside. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's 15 millimeters wide. And then once again, from, let's see where we're at there, here we go. Um, 35 millimeters to 45 millimeters is, this is 35, that's 45, okay? And then you'll just watch how I do the rest of that there. It'll make sense in just a moment. Now let's look down this way to the fingerings, and we'll start off with the first one is at 260 millimeters, okay? And then the next fingering on the front here is at 500 millimeters, and then the last one is at 550 and I know if you see it off a little bit on your screen or whatever, just bear with me. That's as close as it needs to be. It's at 550. So 260, 500, and 550. Those are the three fingerings on the front. This is a five-hole flute, as you know. <laughs> Why drill an extra hole? Let's see if I've got this right. Okay, so we're at 175 for the thumb hole on the top uh, of the flute. That's the actual first fingering. It's gonna be about an F hole there. And then let's look at the bottom one. This one is at 410. That's the other thumb hole. And of course, the reason I put these thumb holes there is because the spacing of these fingerings is just so much that it's very difficult to uh, hold it and use your fingers on top of it to play. So that's where we're at. Uh, I'm going to go drill these holes out. In the meantime, we've got to put our plug in. This plug is just what they call a knockout plug. That's exactly what it says right there. Knockout with a hammer. It's a knockout plug that you use for testing pipes when you're putting PVC down. I don't think I've ever professionally, though I have laid quite a bit of PVC, I've never professionally used a knockout plug other than in the shop in here. Um, so what I'm going to do, this is the only piece that I'm going to glue in for this video. Feel free to do whatever you like, however you see fit otherwise. But I'm just going to put some PVC glue around it there. I'm going to push it right into place so that way it'll be drying while we're working on the rest of it here. So it's just kind of pushed into place there, just like that. Okay, and I'm using this fancy tapered drill bit. This thing's really handy for a lot of stuff. It doesn't drill in all of my wood the way I need it to, but it does great in PVC. Um, I'm using it because I couldn't find my half-inch drill bit earlier, and I needed to drill out some half-inch fingering. So we're just going to use this guy. It also does a really nice job of tapering, although I will have to go in side of each of the holes and clean them out from the inside. I'll show you that in just a moment. And when we're done drilling the fingerings out, I'll drill the sound hole out and we'll go from there. So just keep an eye on what I'm doing. Okay, so there's one. You see what I'm talking about with the stuff here. I won't make you listen to me on each of these. As a matter of fact, I'll probably clean them out all in one fell swoop, but I wanted to show you. That's what I mean by cleaning it out. Okay, let's drill the rest of these holes.
okay? Looks like two of my holes, this one and the thumb hole on the top up here may not have come out to their true half inch size. I'm gonna leave them like that for now and see what we need to do. We might need to come back and redrill them in a bit, but not a problem. Okay, so of course the next part is gonna be squaring this hole up a little bit. That drill part there is just to help us a little bit. Um, not really a super, super benefit. And then I'll show you how to put this little bit of mechanism together. That really kind of not as important as the actual flute process. Um, we'll talk about it in just a moment though. So safety first, and I'm using a rotary tool here um, that has a metal cutter disc on the end of it. Usually this is used in wood and some light ceramics and stuff. I'm going to use it on my PVC here. It's probably a good idea to do this outside uh, to uh, wear a mask. We always have dust collection here in the shop for everything else. But uh, if you just want to watch how I do this, it'll probably make a lot more sense for you. And I promise this is easier than it, than it probably seems. The next thing I'm going to do is very gently, I'm going to just draw my straight line with this tool because it will make a nice square edge groove and then we'll come back and clean some of this other mess up here and I'll show you what we'll do. If you notice, I went inside and I actually dug out some of the bottom of it there underneath of the sound hole, the edge of the sound hole. The reason I did that is because this tool will cut more of it out and make quicker work of it than my file that I'm going to use to clean it up. So. Uh, that's really for a good reason, but uh, if you'll just watch this bit and then I'll show you when I change the sanding drum over for this tool and uh, where we go then. This tool here is handy, but uh, what I need to finish digging that out is this little three quarters inch sanding drum. This one's been used quite a bit already, and a brand new one is going to have a lot straighter and smoother appearance than this one does. But I've used this thing so many times that I don't mind <laughs> using one that's not as perfect. But just watch where we go here, and I'll show you. I'm actually going to take this bit here of the edge down a little um, so that that's actually where our air is going to enter uh, this channel this track here at so uh, because once it uh, is plugged like it is there you know there's no way to put air in here except for through the uh, coupling and the coupling has a nice little ring around it to stop it at a certain point and that's all great but that also stops the air from flowing through our track so that's why we have to dig it down a little deeper.
Okay. I'm going to blow some of this stuff off. There's a lot of concern too over whether PVC is safe to use for making this type of musical instrument. Of. And there are so many things in our lives and our environment that are probably not safe. But currently, at this point in history, when this video is being made, gosh, did I cover all my ends there? Um, PVC is considered to be safe for plumbing, for putting water into your house. So if that's the case, I'd say a flute probably is okay. So now I'm going underneath of the sound hole there, underneath of the front edge of it to sharpen it a little bit and to clean it up. If you notice, I go down a little bit right here. This is where my Dremel drilled my rotary tool and cut into it a little bit when I was rotorating. Just clean a little bit of the edge of this guy up. The sharper this edge, when I say this edge, I mean underneath of here. This is where I'm cutting, is underneath of this piece. I'm not trying to cut too much of this track, I'm cutting under here. Uh, the sharper this edge is under here, the better the flute will sound. And of course, this track has its importance as well, and it does need to be smooth and is a critical part of the flute. Something I haven't tried yet that uh, I may do at the end of the video is a technique that my wife uses. Um, if you'll notice, we have the plug up here, and then there's this length between here and there that's actually hollow that's not being used. I've heard other flute makers say that if you do that, it'll make the flute lower in tone. And that may be the case, but I also know that it messes up the quality of the tone as well because there are turbulences that when you're playing start kind of going around in circles back here and I know if I were to fill from here back with some kind of resin, sawdust and super glue, a wood block, whatever I can fill it with, if I were to fill that it would make the quality of the tone uh, just leaps and bounds different. And the reason I say my wife does this because a lot of times she makes our sawgrass flutes and, uh, and a lot of our um, little people flutes and she'll fill that chamber area uh, because in the sawgrass or river cane or anything like that the natural partition is there partition is there but the partition is only you know as thick as this this file here it's a very thin layer of uh, material inside of the river cane or sawgrass and filling it from the edge of your sound hole back actually makes the flute play just tremendously better so at the end of the video i might give that a shot and see if it helps me any uh, it's something I wanted to do, but not something that you really have to do to make this thing play. It's, you know, there's always room for experimentation, no matter what you're doing. And like I said, the cleaner and smoother this whole deal is, the better off it's going to be. Let's see. And I think I've got my track the right depth. I may have to come back and adjust that in a moment, just to make sure it plays right. Okay, so let me blow some sawdust, or rather PVC dust off my hands. off our camera there. 
I just love these moments. It's almost done. Here it goes. Three, two, one. There it is. Anyway, so what I have on this entourage of, of mess is a couple of reducers to reduce the size from this two inch that I'm gonna put in here last uh, down to a three quarters or one inch. I think it's a one inch here and then this is a one inch down to a half inch. I'm gonna go ahead and put these guys together, just kind of bumping it a little bit, just to make a nice solid seal. I'm not gonna glue them in place right now because I might decide to change this up in a bit, I don't know. Then I have a elbow that's got the half inch in here, uh, half inch male that slips right down in there. That's kind of convenient. And it also is very loose, so it'll slide around in circles, which is good when you're trying something and you don't know if you want it to position this way or that way. Once again, you can glue it in, but I don't know if it's really necessary uh, either overall or what have you. Anyway, so here is a short little piece of half inch PVC tubing. And of course this piece of PVC tubing, uh, the one that's going to be my extension coming down on this guy, it is probably uh, the right length for me, is what I'm going to say. You can make it whatever length you want it to be, longer, shorter, however it works out. This one looks to be about six and a half, seven inches, um, but uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. You can cut this longer, shorter, there's always room, like I said, for experimentation. So putting this short piece of half inch in here, I'm building my elbow like that. Yep, that's pretty solid. And I'm going to put this in here. Okay. Nice and tight there. And then like I say, this dude will spin around a little bit if I don't have it in the exact right place where I want it. And then this elbow, we're going to face out in the opposite direction. And it's going to be something like that. And from there, we'll take our two inch um, coupling here. I'm going to push it down on this and hope that I'm not going to regret it. Because I may have to bump it back out. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. This thing's so big you can't even put your mouth on it to test it right now. You have to put this adapter, or at least several of the adapters. I mean, I could take this one off and just put it in there and blow it like that. But for playing purposes, you're really going to want this elbow stuff. Let's see how she sounds. And I'm not sure if it's going to be in tune. I may need to make a minor adjustment in my pattern. I might need to have these holes a little bit bigger, that kind of thing. Oops, turn my tuner on. Not too shabby. Wow, that's... It's a little bit on the flat on a couple of those holes. It may be because the temperature dropped in here too. And many of you uh, guys at home are thinking, and gals, are thinking, that flute's just 432. You made it 432. Well, I didn't do it on purpose. This is the temperature, trust me. But anyway, kind of a neat little dude. If you think I look stupid playing this thing, <laughs> just wait, it's almost your turn. Anyway, so uh, I might go back and, and try uh, something after it warms up to see if my fingerings are in the right diameter. But it's, it's almost too perfectly, uh, about 40 hertz, flat. So anyway, I'm not unhappy with this. I'll try it when it's warmer outside because like I said, this is late night in the Blue Bear Food Shop. Just a little something to do. A holiday weekend. Uh, what is it? This ain't even a holiday. What am I talking about? I mean, it could be any day. You might be watching this on the 4th of July. Happy birthday. Anyway, <laughs> so just a little short little technique that you can do to make yourself one of these mega low uh, contrabass, contrabass uh, 
Native American, and please say style with this because really it's not even a style. Fingerings in the back and somewhere in the lower register like this. It's not close to being Native American. It's based loosely on the Native American flute, made by a Native American, but that's, you, know, you may not be, and that's all cool, you know, but however it is, loosely based on Native American flute. So, kind of a neat, neat, fun toy to play with anyway, and something that just about anybody can do. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you did, and if you didn't, please subscribe also. We need as many hecklers as we can get. Just kidding, uh, but uh, we would love to hear from you. We really would. So please comment if you would, subscribe, and as I hear so many other YouTubers out there, like I have time to watch YouTube, uh, say please make sure you hit that bell button because that'll ensure that you get my latest updates. I thought subscribing did that, but apparently it takes just one more step. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, like I say, leave them in the comments. Feel free to. If you want to send us pictures, our website, bluebearflutes.com, is always open to you. And uh, you can buy lots of flutes there. I'm not going to be selling anything like this anytime soon. Um, not really ever. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you've enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun to make, I'll tell you that, and a lot of fun to play. And so simple that, you know, really anybody could do it. So thank you guys so much again. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and anything else that you can think of that we might be on. Chances are we're there or not. But uh, we would like to hear from you and see you again soon. So once again, Charlie Matatuela signing out for Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com. Y'all take care.